Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Ray White commercial Between the Lines Live. Uh, it's, it's great to be here. Today, I'm actually uh, sitting in the Sunshine Coast. So we're here at Stockland's Aura community, which is really exciting to have. So I'm um, looking forward to having a really good in-depth conversation um, with the team here talking about all things Sunshine Coast. So today, I'm joined by uh, Michael Shadfall and also Paul Butler. So they're two of our commercial directors of our businesses here up on the Sunshine Coast. And also, thank you to our host, um, Matthew Byrne, who's uh, here at Stockland in the Senior Development Economic Development Manager. So thanks for having us and um, thanks for joining us, guys. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Vanessa. So I wanted to come here up on the Sunshine Coast. I've been a big advocate for this market prior to COVID and also through until now. Uh, it's a market that's seen an awful lot of growth, uh, a lot of uh, growth in terms of investment activity and also population. So as we know, Sunshine Coast really benefited from the uh, interstate migration from the southern states, particularly during the COVID period. And we've seen a huge amount of uh, take up on, on land and stock and, and it's just a really interesting market to kind of know a little bit about. So I thought I'll, um, we'll start today and we we'll might just um, jump over to you, uh, Matt, and talk a little bit about the Aura project. Yeah, well, first of all, welcome to Aura. Thanks very much for coming down. Um, so we're a uh, 20,000 dwelling uh, project, ultimately home to 50,000 people. I'm um, located at the southern end of the Sunshine Coast. Um, we've been at the project now for uh, nearly five years. Um, there's uh, 8,800 residents uh, here at Aura. Um, and last year we were the fastest selling must plan community in the country, which is a pretty amazing statistic to have for a regional location like the Sunny Coast. Yeah. And um, just there's still so much activity, you can't see out here, but there's so much um, so, so much development still going on, the industrial precincts, business park precincts, and having a coffee downstairs this morning, there's heaps of kids and families around, which is it's really exciting. But let's, let's switch just to the commercial market um, and let's just talk about what's been going on um, with the commercial market over the last little while and what we expect to see going forward. Um, let's just start with industrial. So as we know, industrial has been a red hot asset class, um, particularly during the COVID period. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what's going on here? I understand land supply is pretty pretty tight, just like everywhere else in the country. Um, what have you seen, Paul, particularly in that kind of rental space? Oh, look, in the rental space, rents have, rents have increased dramatically over the last two years. Um, in some instances, 40, 50%. Um, in some instances, even more. I, I think the, the both the shortage of land and the in increasing cost of actually building stuff and force those rents up pretty significantly. And I don't think they're going to abate. I think they're here for, for a while. They've always been on the lighter side of the feasibility with, with industrial, and now they have to be around that 200, or the product's just not going to come out of the ground. Yeah. Well, it's a difficult time because that construction cost is, is such a huge component. That's kind of set that new benchmark for, for rent, if you like, I suppose. Yeah. Like, if you look at, uh, you know, a, a stock standard development on a 45, 50% site coverage, your development costs these days are up around three grand a metre. You have to make those sorts of rents to get the margin to do the project. You wouldn't touch mm. it otherwise. And there's, there's probably, while we have seen some of those kind of raw costs starting to kind of level out a little bit, you know, when, when the rates go up, it's very rare that we see them come shooting back down. It's, just, it's a new kind of normal now, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think you'll see rates come back at all. And, you know, um, clear span stuff is probably settled around 1200 bucks a metre at the moment for us in the last projects we've done. Um, the, the stuff that's strata titleable and smaller. At the peak, we're probably looking at 1600 bucks a metre construction. They, they are back a bit, probably 1400, 1450 now, but um, you know, that's, still a, that's still a solid wedge to get a project. Done. So vacancy? None. Still, yeah, no, no vacancy. And are you echoing that sentiment, Mike, with what you're saying? Um, we have a bit more land at this end of the Sunshine Coast, so we've still seen construction well and truly underway, yeah, but the cost is certainly an inhibitor. Um, we definitely have a, a mix of uses still looking for space. Mm -hmm. um, we have some vacancy as, as stuff comes out of the ground, but it's quickly absorbed. Mm -hmm. usually, um, usually where things would sit still post-construction, we're seeing that absorption happen before completion. Um, and rates uh, certainly increased significantly since 2020. And is there any tenant type more active than another? Like we know the Sunshine Coast, you know, the construction um, segment of the market, is, is that kind of your main space user? Uh, yeah, the, yes and no. We, we have a lot of um, people that work in the e-commerce industry coming into smaller sheds particularly. So it's the new retail, we, we think. You know, you get people that are certainly setting up a 
a small business. Uh, they would have been a retailer before that had a large rent and a big fit out cost and relied on foot traffic are now um, taking position into a industrial shed that's quite a nice looking industrial shed. They have to be spec quite nicely and good amenity around them, like a place like Aura where there's you know lots of stuff going on. And those businesses, they trade outside of the region, so they're really strong for the region. And so we get growth because you've got somebody, a couple, a young couple, one person working in construction, the other person's entrepreneurial, they build a business together and a family business, and that could be he's a subcontractor in the construction industry making good money, and his partner is somebody who's trading in a product online. And they might be working out of the same property. Yeah. You know, it's quite often we're seeing similar stuff like that where you might have a florist and an accountant something like that doing those kinds And of how things. about investment activity? So we, we saw record levels of investment of all assets, all commercial assets over the last couple of years. Um, interest rates obviously they went up again yesterday. Uh, are we seeing, are we, what sort of, who is buying these assets? Are they owner occupiers or are they, is there a mix or? Yeah, owner occupiers definitely have come off the market a little bit. Um, there isn't the stock for them, that's the problem and they're waiting for, they have to wait for the construction to come into it, so that they they feel the pressure that they were under has backed off a little bit, and they're being quite. They're having discussions with us about innovating themselves. You know, how do I get more use out of the floor space in industrial, particularly? Um, or they'll wait for land releases and see if they can pick some stuff up. And there's a, a little bit of land going to be released in Caloundra in the next um, twelve months. So yeah. people are holding back to make sure that they get that. And um, people like uh, Stockland and the Economic Development Department of the State are specifically going, well, we're going to keep this uh, land for occupiers of it that are going to build businesses here and, you know, enhance the community, and that might answer that. Yeah, the demand has been a real challenge for um, the, the landowners. Um, um, at Aura, we've got an aspiration of delivering one job per household, um, one job for 20,000 um, houses. Um, and the only way we can do that is by targeting really key employment generators. Um, and we've, that, that means we've been quite selective around the businesses who we've supported to come into the business park. Um, and we've got some, got some criticism for, for doing that. Um, but that's what's important to us here at Aura. Um, um, we've really focused in on the construction technologies, clean technologies. Um, we've got a construction cluster where all the tradies know to come and get all their bits and pieces. Um, and now we're going to be moving into more of a an office kind of precinct within the business park as, as well. Yeah, and, and Mike, you talked about these quite attractive looking industrial buildings and, and coming mm. down here, they're, they're particularly mm. attractive looking industrial buildings and they do have that kind of that business park flavour where they're kind of quasi office, quasi That's industrial right. offering yeah. the ability to have your florist, if you like, as mm. well as all your accounting practice and have kind of, you know, the, the trading <coughs> part as well, um, which is really interesting. But how about in terms of, um, well, you mentioned land supply, there is some new land supply coming on. Is that going to be enough, do you think? You know, historically, you've had some issue with land supply really being um, released in line with the expectations of the community. Is, is, do you think that, that we're at a good point here or it's still quite far behind? I know we're, we're a long way behind in terms of where we've got to deliver land supply, both for residential requirements and commercial import requirements. Sunshine Coast has matured, like regional markets have really shifted. And people see us as this holiday destination that's nice and you can go and buy something and, you know, retire and buy an ice cream shop is kind of where you get people. But what's happened is we've moved away from high street economies that were feeding where people could come and be entrepreneurial, but they were only servicing the market that they directly lived with. Yeah. With, uh, with the advent of online business and e-commerce and the COVID pushing people out, we have so many more people exporting from our region. So regions are now a really dynamic place that can go out and compete in the rest of the world. And so we particularly are filling spaces where people have moved to the Sunshine Coast and bought their business with them or they're creating new businesses, but they're not competing against each other. So in an area where you might have one push bike shop in a, in a high street, if you bought in two push bike streets, you didn't grow the economy of push bikes in, on the Sunshine Coast now. In Aura, we have three electric push bike salespeople that don't compete at all with the market and they sell all around Australia. So that growth is coming because we're such a good place to live. Our, our, the children have great education facilities or are building new school every year yeah. and they're all topping the, the range. And then you've got this lifestyle, like we have a, you know, we have the vibrancy of Hastings Street. Yeah. And we have the security of a, of a 
economic base, economic driver that gives you a job. We're close to Brisbane. We've got a great lifestyle. And so all of a sudden, we can't keep up with that demand and that entrepreneurship. And that's why you had such a huge push, particularly during COVID, of the, of the population moving up here, because it's not just the lifestyle, but it's the ability to, to, to create these businesses and to, to grow and be quite prosperous in a really great environment to, well, to be in. Well, the other thing that changed during COVID or post-COVID was, was not just the, the massive increase in population coming here, but it was the shift on population through this region as well as, or, or because of that population growth. So I'll use Noosa as an example because it's a nice little bubble. It's got a population of roughly 60,000 people, right? 5,000 people moved to Noosa post-COVID, 3,000 people moved out. Um, so you, the net result's only 2,000 people, but those 5,000 people that actually are now in Noosa did exactly what Michael said. They brought their own businesses. Hell, we've had you know, guys who are senior senior partners in massive law firms and accountancy firms need their whole departments up to the Sunshine Coast. Mm. So they want that regional lifestyle. They've come here to get it. They've actually got it. They've now created value in areas by the beach where we've all traditionally lived. And that's why the Sunshine Coast has only got one way to go, and that's out by the highway. Yeah, yeah. And on, on um, talking about the, the industrial market before we moved on, on to office, is um, something that we saw uh, prior to COVID um, and also during COVID was this kind of rise in these man caves, if you like. Um, mm. And it's probably something that was more north, um, closer up to, to Noosa. Is that still a thing? Are these, uh, is a lot of this industrial space that's, you know, we've got no occupant, we've got no um, vacancy, the occupancy is high. Are they, is there actual businesses in these places? Or do you think that that's gonna, there was gonna be a shift with that? Is it gonna be a turnaround? Like, I understand, Further down south, like you, you know, you are you're very occupied, and you have you have legit business businesses in all of these facilities. But there's got to be, um, particularly up north, a few vacancies that could come back into the market. Look, I think that there'll be projects that people look back on and kind of go, "What was that about?" You know, building these complexes with 20, 30 of these sheds that are 30, 40, 50 square metres in size that really aren't productive. You've either got a business that's growing out of it or you've got a business that's going out of business or someone is storing a caravan in there. So I kind of think we'll look back in the long term and go, oh, look, that's the that's the new two-bedroom equivalent yeah, of, yeah. of the industrial world mm -hmm. and we'll have to deal with those. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that they were necessarily the best use for our limited supply of industrial land. Yeah. Well, I think that they're, we, we haven't found the man cave story to be true. So mostly people would come and the government put my caravan in here and they couldn't turn it around, so they didn't. Yeah. But most of the most of it is probably five percent of it is people buying things to store toys as they say it, and there is that conversation that floats around. But ninety five percent of the space that we have is sort of above a hundred square meters, up to about three hundred square meters, and occupied by businesses that are real Paul, Paul said, you know, they're usually dual businesses and you know they they're probably require more office space a bit similar to this than they do warehouse mm -hmm. and that's a mix that we're we're constantly battling with in terms of zoning and planning because there is a whole range of things that say you're not meant to have people in offices but you need office today because if somebody's selling a product online like we, we talk about it there's a company up here and the kids will know Billy J you know it, it was a warehouse driven business mm. but it's a massive it's a massive online business and they now occupy 600 square meters of office space mm. in another building besides their you know so these businesses grow all the time yeah and they start from very small businesses and grow very quickly mm. and just on office space so um the property council brought out their office um, market report earlier this year and then sunny coast gets a gets a um get some results once a year and vacancy uh, is only four percent so that's one of the lowest in the whole country like where this is where you know I'm from Sydney the vacancies are you know 10 over 13 percent in um over 13 percent in Melbourne whereas a market like this like I understand it's a small market and you've got some beautiful assets like this is it's predominantly kind of captures that Marucci or CBD um but vacancy is really tight which is just indicative of these kind of growing businesses that are that are that are here yeah certainly um in our experience, and it's different from one end of the coast to the other. It's 60 kilometres long, the Sunshine Coast, so it can, can vary very much. It's, but um, down, you know, in the sort of southern end of the coast, particularly, it's mostly businesses that are growing off the back of our construction industry. So our professional services have, since 2015, have really doubled and tripled in size. So their requirements have grown due to the fact that the construction industry and infrastructure spend has grown so much. 
Yeah. Don't, um, don't forget to throw medical in there too. You know, we're, we get, we're not getting any younger on the coast anymore, so the medical requirements for, for professional space have grown significantly. Um, and also the fact that people want to work out of A-grade space. Yes. They don't want to go to work and work out of a 35-year-old brick building that hasn't been loved by, by landlords. Particularly so. these, these interstate yeah. um, migrants, if you like, because they've, they've probably come from a Sydney or a Melbourne and, you know, you, you want have a different nice. quality of expectation in terms of quality for your yeah. own business. I think Paul's, um, the point Paul's making too is that we got NDIS and COVID at the same time. Yeah. So those businesses really flourished on the coast and they, they've made a mark for them. And same with aged care. So that they're a big component mm. of um, the office space building up is health is a big part of that. And these, the people that are buying these assets, again, is that owner own occupier piece or is that a private investor piece or? Most of the stock that we have in the southern end of the coast is institutionally owned or private high net worth individuals. So you could, strata office is something that we, we could sell very easily on yeah. the central coast. Yeah. All day, every day. Give me thousands of metres of it and I'll get rid of it. Oh, wow. Well. Um, yeah, so, and it's the same in Noosa, you know. Um, Commercial office space up there is limited to small strata, uh, or either you know where our office is in Goodchap Street, or out at um, Stockwell's development, which is on the go slow because he's building residential units out there to populate it first. So uh, we're in we're in kind of a, a situation, and Maroochydore is a bit the same, with the way construction costs have gone, planning timeframes of planning and all that sort of stuff. People are just put it on hold yeah. developing these things. So. That's why we're naturally at four percent, and and rents are now, you know, we're probably commencing some deals at four hundred a metre. Wow! Which is you know not a not solid rent to, to put in there. There's still some incentive, but yeah. it's, it's still a pretty solid rent. And institutional investment up in Noosa? Yeah, well, Texas just bought the Nooseville Professional Centre for the Professional Medical Centre for thirty-five million dollars. Um, they've got a plan to put a big cancer care unit in with that. We've already upped the rents by 50 bucks a metre wow. to, to talk to those What sort of tenants. yields that, can you tell us? Uh, the passing yield was just in the mid-high fives, 5.6. Okay. And on on completion of the leasing in there, it'll be around about 6.7. Yeah. Yeah, 6 so it's pretty solid yield. Yeah. And so, um, Matt, with, with Aura, do you see kind of uh, the this business park, the, your business park precincts kind of slanting more towards in, uh, office, sorry, rather than industrial? Do you think how... What, what's the kind of, is it each building has its own set of rules or requirements? Yeah, well, we've got a, um, a separate precinct, if you like, within the business park um, that is office, dedicated to office. Um, you know, office in a greenfield context um, often takes some time for it to be viable. Um, your yeah, Stockwell example is right. We, the population builds and then there's the demand there for the office. Um, but we are starting to get good some inquiry from local businesses that would like to choose us as their regional head office. Um, so uh, early days for us in that space. Um, but as an institutional investor, we're looking at our own city centre um, where we'll sponsor some and potentially spec some office buildings ourselves. We're a long way down the track with, um, with uh, some higher education providers to come into our city centre. That's, so that's probably likely to be the first foray into office in, in these projects. Yeah, well, we've seen that around around the country. That that's um, yeah, some successful office precincts that have that high high amount of education. In there as yeah. Well. yeah. Well, and they're all rebounding at the moment too. Mm. Particularly the international providers. Mm. They're they're out running around doing deals left, right, and centre and mm. putting yeah. space for them. Yeah, that's right. They're, that's a whole different topic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so so the office market. How about retail? So the other thing that Sunshine Coast has really benefited from has been um, a huge uptick in tourism. Like you've always been a tourism. Um, destination during COVID, a lot of your kind of local Queenslanders reacquainted themselves with um, Sunny Coast. You're, you're only a short drive away from Brisbane. Uh, beautiful location, uh, accommodation options here. So um, as a result, we've probably seen some markets do particularly well. Like Noosa is probably a really good example. Tourism has been pretty strong there. Oh, I don't think there's a um, there's a beachside suburb on the Sunshine Coast that's not experiencing bumper tourism and, and pretty solid retail um, sales at the moment. So, you know, Hayson Street's obviously top of the tree there. Uh, our last deals rental wise were 3,000 plus a square metre for 60 to 80 square metre shops. Wow. Um, there's a couple of options there tomorrow. Uh, we may crack the 100,000 a metre mark in terms of sale price. Don't know. It'll be about a 20% increase on the last sale, which was pre-COVID. 
Um, that street's full at the moment. Uh, but then, you know, on the back of that, Noosa Junction's full at the moment. There's been so much activity there because of people wanting to open smaller businesses and, and get into a, a, a high volume environment. So that's really come of age. Um, but I think that's flowing down, you know. Cock Tree's the same. Bullcock Beach is the same. Bullcock Street's going well. It's only got a couple of vacancies at the moment. Um, is it food? No, not food, all of Food's the main driver, I think, in terms of uh, bringing that activity and giving that experience to the, to, the, to the tourists. Like, we certainly didn't have that vibrancy pre-COVID, and we've seen a big emergence in food and that sort of activity, particularly Mooloola Bar has seen, you know, a rejuvenation in some areas because they've moved to food. Caloundra has seen precincts where food's attracting, you know, business away from other areas. Um, and obviously Hastings Street's, you know, that sort of almost a national destination for top quality restaurants to, to move to. And small retail is, is bringing in. So that, that really sort of boutique kind of younger demographic are coming up with really good and innovative ways to present products. And maybe Paul, the bigger chains aren't coping as well. I don't think the uh, I don't think the shopping centres and the chains are going as well. I don't. I think high street trading is exceptional. Like I don't think I've ever seen it better in 20 years of real estate. Um, I think with the food thing, food was predominant post COVID leasing. Everything was food because you could get supply of it, and particularly small food because it could be a mum and dad or a family operation. They didn't have to go and fight the staff like the, the larger operations did. That kind of slowed down a little bit purely because we're running out of properties that can supply grease trap at any source. Um, and once you get the right food operators in, the retail does flock around it. And again, those smaller guys, they haven't had to rely on having $300,000 worth of stock come in at a time to, to fill a couple of shops up. So your mum and dad, your young, there's heaps of young crew coming through at the moment, which is fantastic. And I think that's part of Sydney and Melbourne moving up. You know, well, one of the trends we've seen in Sydney and Melbourne has been this huge uptick in luxury type retailing. So whereas what used to be kind of all, all around food, is any of, like Noosa is a, a pretty premier destination. It's, Are you seeing any of that sort of stuff coming up there? It's going there. So we'll bring a shop to the market shortly that could be, it'll be the best shop I've ever brought to the street. Um, I think we'll, we'll see our first major international tenant in Hastings Street. Oh, that's going to be and so. and how about your kind of small, uh, like Sunshine Coast and, and broadly South East Queensland has always had a lot of these kind of very small convenience type um, centres and, and you're, you know, uh, in terms of the projects here in Aura that are about to embark on kind of a big town centre project mm. here. Mm. Um, how do you think those kind of small convenience and how do you think those kind of centres, like you mentioned, you think occupancy is pretty a bit difficult in some of them, but what are you seeing in kind of those small convenience things and what, what do you see as retail being here in Aura? Well, that's our key focus for us here at Aura. Um, we, our community needs retail convenience. Um, and so um, we're um, in the process of designing our city centre, shopping centre. We have to have the first stage open in um, 26. It should be 30,000 square metres of a, ultimately a 90,000 square metre shopping centre. Wow. But we're struggling like everybody else is with uh, construction costs and availability of contractors and all the rest of it. Um, and also competition for capital within our own group um, and, and where you, is it best to deploy that, that capital as well. So Yeah, yeah and I suppose the other difficulty is there's been so much change in this retail sector over time. Mm. What does a shopping centre look like yeah. in the future? Is, is, um, is, I'm sure that, that that planning has changed quite a bit over time. Yeah, it, it, it has. Um, you know, there's still the anchors of the, the DDSs that, that are in there and only their own boxes, but definitely to Paul's point, the, they, um, the design really has gone to more of a high street kind of design shopping centre that's more open and breezy and, mm -hmm. and, and breathes well yeah. in that space. Okay, I think that we're, we're, we're running out of time here, so let's just jump on with um, what are the opportunities? There's so much we could talk about, there's the airport to talk about, there's the Olympics, like you're going to have, there's so much world's eyes are going to be on, on the Sunshine Coast as well as South East Queensland. Um, going forward, but let's just talk about what do we see now, what do we see in the next little while? Hit me with your opportunities for Sunshine Coast next couple of years. Oh, I think if you just keep looking positionally uh, in relative to the things we discussed, you know, you, you, you won't go wrong. Like any market that we're, the market we're going into is obviously going to be a little bit tougher for people over the next one, two, three years, whatever it will be. 
Um, there's going to be some distress assets. There always is. Mm -hmm. And make the most of those opportunities when they come up because uh, I think they might be a little bit harder to come by this time. Um, and just, you know, I, I, I suggest keeping an open mind of where this market's actually going to go because when you do come through it, the real estate you end up holding always looks a hell of a lot better than when you went into it. You know? So just steer the course. Michael? I think there's three keys. You know, first and foremost, there's, it's really hard to find greenfield development sites, so you've got to keep your eye out for brownfield development sites with income attached to them. I think that they're a really big opportunity on the Sunshine Coast, and a lot of those places have been under-rented for a long time and owned by older families. Keep an eye out for those things, where you're buying them on a yield that in three or four years will be a, a cheap block of land to build on if, as the space runs out. Second, uh, I think that the Sunshine Coast, with its growth, will outstrip interest rates. So anything that you buy that's got some form of construction um, construction business in it because of the pipeline of work coming and the Olympics, will uh, the rents will be strong for a long time, whether it's in quasi-retail, bulky goods, those kinds of things, you'll see that moving forward. And then the other thing is that I think that you'll certainly see some um, opportunities to enhance retail space, you know, really start to up, you know, pretty up some of those retail opportunities that are being flat. And I think that if you look at, um, if you look at Noosa Junction for a case, you know, a decade ago, no one wanted to be there today, you can't get space there, you know, so those opportunities are coming to the coast as the demographic mm -hmm. certainly changes. Uh, and then keep an eye on, you know, just all of that infrastructure that's going to be poured into here. I think that you go back to 2014, there was about 400 million spent in development pipeline. Now there's 1.7 million spent, and that's, you know, that's planned out for another two or three years at least to be committed to. So that's jobs in tow. And then we, you know, by the time they bring in the election and the next lot of um, infrastructure spend and, and planning for the Olympics, you'll see that grow. So I don't think that we're going backwards for the next decade. I think that the Sunshine Coast is in, this is the best decade to be involved in yeah. South East Queensland and the Sunshine Coast is probably as good a place as any to be. Okay, so capital growth to to extend beyond what their kind of interest rate movements are and it's look out for and distress sales would be um, from you, Paul. And so tell me, um, Matt, we'll end on you. Economic development for the whole region, I suppose, is is, on, is, is something that you look at. So it's probably not just in the next year or two, but what do you think is going to what we, what are we going to say here at Aura? Um, look, Aura is a, a black canvas, effectively, yeah, today. So um, we're on the lookout for for tenants. We're on the um, lookout for um, small developers to come and help us out with uh, strata commercial buildings. Um, we're on the lookout for medical uh, operators. We're on the lookout for higher education operators, <laughs> you, you name it, there's... Uh, well, you've got to support the population that's, well, yeah, well, that's, that's coming right. here there's, there's quickly. 50,000 people will, will be here by mid-2030s, um, mid to be honest. Yeah, yeah. wow. Yeah. So, all good news. Sunny coast. There's some blips in the road for, for other markets, but we're still feeling pretty optimistic here. Oh, look, the fundamentals are right. The fundamentals will be the, uh, are the cleanest they've been on the Sunshine Coast ever since I was a kid living here. So, that population growth, that that growth in terms of infrastructure. Yeah, the infrastructure spend is huge. It's it? not going away. No. You know, so it keeps it just keeps self fulfilling. And this kind of thing, you know, these these kind of towns, they just fold into themselves over and over and over again and keep reinventing themselves as yeah. they go along. So well certainly an interesting time for the Sunshine Coast and we uh, thanks to the to the guys joining me today. I think that was a really interesting chat. A lot of you probably may not have known about what's going on here at the Sunshine Coast, but it's certainly um, one to watch, particularly not just for the next year, but for, for many, many years to come. So thanks so much for joining us, guys. Yeah. Uh, so that will, so. no worries. And so that's the end of our um, Ray, Ray White Between the Lines live event for, uh, for this month. Uh, stay tuned, next month we're going to have an event where we talk about medical. We, we touched on medical a little bit today, so it's going to be it's a really interesting um, part of the, the market and we'll look at that medical asset class. So keep an eye out for information about that. Um, otherwise, thanks very much to everyone and we'll see you next time.